Okay, so now that we're unpaused, again, just a quick recap. So we represented each vector uh, in terms of its components. And now we're working with the left-hand side and everybody did their cross products. So I'm looking for uh, really three expressions. So your first one, which would represent the X of the cross product. Uh, what do we have out there? B2, C3 minus, okay, comma, looking for the Y. Anybody want to take on the Y? B3, C1, yeah, minus. Yeah, the, number, the more times you do this, it just becomes like second nature in the Z. Anybody want to throw out the Z? B1, C2, minus. Perfect. Okay. So we've got that part done. Now I'm just going to rub out this part here that I have. Right, that's my rough work. And we're going to go one more step for now. Maybe two. What we'll do is let's do the dot product. Maybe organize it a little bit. And then I'll have you come back and work with the right hand side. Okay, because something hopefully miraculous is going to happen as you work through the right hand side. Okay, so dot product again. I know there was some discussion in the back corner a little while back about how did that go? And it was oh, x1, y1 plus. There's a lot of discussion about the order in which that was done. But uh, for now, what we'll do is we won't distribute in. We'll just use some brackets. Okay. Now remember, we're going to drop the square brackets because the dot product produces a scalar. So we're not going to need those anymore. So we have a1, and that's going to get distributed over the b2c3 minus b3c2. Plus, right, remember with the dot product we're adding, and then A2 gets distributed over, you know, the second expression. And then A3 over the last. And we'll go one more step. Um, we're going to have a great number of terms here, but we're going to actually distribute the A's into each of these and then we'll we'll take care of the right hand side after that okay So once that's down, maybe just take a double check my work, your work, make sure I've got all the right subscripts that I didn't miss miss anything. I'm going to pause the video again, and what I'm going to have you do is take the right hand side, go through similar process, take it as far as maybe the same line that we have here, same as this one, and then we'll have a discussion about uh, maybe we'll compare the left and right hand sides. Okay, so we're back at it. I wrote down left-hand side. Not what we need. Okay, so everybody was working away at their triple scalar product for the right-hand side. I'm looking for a line of information that is kind of similar to uh, this line that we have down here. So starting, I think, with negative C1, if I could get... Some volunteerism, that'd be awesome. So minus C1, keep it going here. What's next? B2A3, followed by C1. Okay, so I've got from that side of the room, so we'll try to keep you know, fewer voices, so one at a time. So someone for the, the next two terms. Yeah, sir. Okay. And 
And to round out the process, I'm assuming minus C3, if I can get one more person to step in and help me out here. Gwen, do you have, do you have something for us? Okay, thank you very much. Are we, are we missing something? Did I write something down wrong? To be or not to be's? Not to be's. Okay. Precision erasing on the smart board. And that's an A2, yes? Okay, thank you so much for, for identifying that. So what we'll do, I'm going to go back and cut and paste a little bit. I'm going to bring forward the bottom line we had on the right hand side. So see if I can capture this accordingly. Copy. And I'm yes I am recording. That's good. Paste. Okay. So there we have right hand side, left hand side. We need to have uh, take our trained eyes, right, and look for uh, similarities, if we have any. Anything we can sort of pair off together, perhaps? Are, are they the same? Like, without rearranging stuff, not. Okay, so typically, right, the standard or the convention is for us as, as mathematicians here is to, is to write everything down. I'm just going to highlight it, but maybe you could write them down later on. So you're saying that on the first term on the left-hand side is equal to this one. Okay. Um, anything else? What do you see? I'm hoping there's more. I know they're all kind of messed up a bit, but let me change colors here. If we focused on, let's say, let's look for this one. The last term here. Yep. Okay. Let's look for more. This one with one, two, three. So if we've got that much right, I think we're, we're going to find the rest. Uh, different color here. Go gray. What else? Let's do this one. Where's the other C1? And they match. Suffice to say, right, I think... Uh, where's that one? C2 right here. And then, of course, these ones here. So based on highlighting, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay. So since left side is right side, we can then confidently say that a dot b cross c is equal to negative c dot b cross a. And I'll more than likely assign maybe one or two. Well, I can't promise how long proofs are, but a couple just to give you some exposure and to get you thinking about how these proofs uh, you know, are done. Uh, because guaranteed, if, if you take algebra at, at university, you're going to be thrown into uh, a number of situations where you need to try to show how things might be equal. Okay, it is a, It's a really big part uh, of algebra. Any questions before we hit the stop button? All right, stop it is.